So it has been a very difficult spring. So there was a lot of heavy covers there because the lads were uh, housed area at the back end. And then obviously wet weather this spring didn't help then grazing those covers and getting out early either. So what we found this year with our robotic customers that were grazing was that they were out, able to get out a bit earlier than the parlor counterparts. So why was that? Basically for kind of a couple of reasons. One of those reasons is they do have good access points. So like a lot of their paddocks are set up in a way of like that every second or third stake has a gap handle. So like they were able to get in one gap and out another gap. The other main reason was because because they're being milked on a robot, we can set the grazeway. So that's your selection gate. We can set the grazeway to say, right, they're going out to this block at 10 o'clock in the morning. And some farmers are only letting them out for say about three hours. So 10 a.m. until 1 p.m., the grazeway is open. Um, your cows will trickle out because obviously not all the cows are going to go at the one time. The cows aren't hungry because they're inside getting silage and buffering the shed. So they would leave in trickles and they'd be coming back in trickles. But importantly then, they also wouldn't be locked in the paddock either. So they can come and go as they want. But once they came back in after the three hours, they weren't allowed back out. If the farmer then decided, actually, you know, I'll try to get another block in grazed, they then open the grazeway some, from, say, 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. And then they go a different direction altogether. And again, trickle in and trickle out of that paddock. You don't have 100 cows all milked at the one time going out together at the one time. So you might only have 20 or 30 going out. And then another hour, you'll have another 20 or 30 going out. So it's very much not doing damage to the ground that way and it was interesting because we, we've after running discussion group meetings there as well and a lot of our lads are in their second round now and well in their second round we even have a couple of farms a certain percentage that are actually starting their third round um but going by the meetings and talking a lot of them obviously still go to their own local jackets discussion meeting as well um and a couple of them in each of their meetings said that they were you know there was two or three robotic farms that were in that group and the rest were all part of farms and they were the only ones in their second round and everyone else is still in the first round because, again, they didn't get them out early enough because they were doing too much damage in the parlour. So take this paddock, for example. This was actually only grazed, I think it was one, two. So three days ago, this was grazed for the second time already this year. Um, so this farm is actually quite a wet farm. And he's quite heavily stocked farm as well. And what he was doing was he was just having strip uh, a spur road. And he started at the back of the paddock and he just moved a strip wire every single day. So like there's a nine acre field behind us as well. Same thing. It's also in the second round and literally just started at the back with the spur road and then moved it up. Um, and he would have the bones of 90 to 100 cows there. He's 120 cows milk at the moment, but he would have had 90 cows there milking when he first went out in the first round. And he was able to manage it that way by giving them a slot. Then tomorrow, then they don't get that slot. They come, come back a, another acre and they graze the next bit. So they're back fencing the whole time as well. So you also might be able to tell here, so obviously no matter what we, what happened this year, there was um, some damage or marking done. Um, I think everyone does damage anyway. And I was always told, especially back um, when I first started going to Chag's discussion meetings myself, was if you didn't do any damage at all, did you even try to get cows out at all? So um, a lot of people would have marked ground here, but not necessarily damaged it or poached it. So um, there is a bit of marking done here, and we actually just had our discussion meeting here today on this farm. And the conversation came up about rolling or not rolling. And I suppose um, some people are going rolling some paddocks that were uh, what they class as, you know, damaged. And other lads are just going to leave it or maybe even, you know, stitching a bit of grass seed and level it out that way. So um, there was damage done. Don't get me wrong. There was damage done on a lot of farms. Even dry farms this year were damaged. But the point is at least they got grass intakes into them and could reduce the actual um, silage that they were giving them. Because a lot of poor silage was fed this year as well. Um, so that would have helped protein by getting some grass into the diet and it was also helping um, yields as well. So really the three main things um, that grazing with robots will allow is because you're on an ABC system, you're letting cows out, uh, they're trickling out and they're trickling back in so they're not all going in in a bunch. They're not locked in the paddock and a lot of the time our customers have it set up that they have very good access points so they have quite good roadways. Um, they might only be spur roads and they have quite good gaps as well so it's allowing for all that like so you need infrastructure but you also need to actually be able to let the cows out and then you know that they're not locked in the paddock either that they're not doing the damage there because that's when a lot of the damage is done